it has really been a journey. The foundation is almost 10 years old as a 5013C. Next year will be our 10th anniversary. But um, we've been in the community for what, 20 Since years? Since 2003. Since 2003. And we're very excited about being here in downtown Sabo. And with that, I'd like to introduce one of our co-founders and the force behind the daily Mondays at Racine, Rachel DiMofetto and Carla Waldron. I'd just like to say that after working this nonprofit from my kitchen table for a decade, to be in a building like this brings me enormous confidence of where this foundation is supposed to be and where it's going to go. I know it's going there. I can feel it in my gut. Everything we've done up until this point has been about patient first and taking care of our neighbors, our community, our family members, and now we get to have collaborative space with my team, it's just, it's a dream come true. So thank all of you very, very much. And Rachel, please. Once upon a time in 2003, we started this and got patient referrals from Dr. Robert Schwartz, who has soon since passed, but, uh, and never in our wildest, wildest dreams did I ever think it would come to just even this next level up, this elevation. And with, the, with my sister Cynthia Sansone, who's not here, and Rosemary Berga, really, and my entire racing team who volunteered their time and their expertise to really just softly help these people. Again, I mean, coming to this space, coming to this time in our foundation and our mission, and knowing everybody in this room and then some clearly sees our vision and clearly understands the gravity of what it takes to really just lend a helping hand. I mean, there's so many charities and so many foundations out there that everybody could volunteer for and, and meaningful things, not just, you know, nothing, but, you know, we see the change, we get the feedback from the oncology groups, the hospitals, that we are making a change in somebody's life. and. Again, it's my life's work. I know it's Carla's life's work. And my other sisters, Amory DiMolfetto, the founding sisters. I really, we really need to start tagging out my <laughs> sisters as that. Amory DiMolfetto keeps our finances in check. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. Um, Michelle Powell, who brings her corporate mm -hmm. expertise to our table. And, of course, Carla, myself, Cynthia, in her absence, I'm sure that she would be thrilled to see this at this point in our careers and our time. And thank, thank you again, you. everybody, for all your love and care. We appreciate it. Well, uh, Carla and Rachel, I, I was, you, we had a chance to speak before, you know, about the wonderful work that you, you did in the history of, of, of this foundation and all the good work that, that you have done. Uh, and all the people that you've helped, and it was it's re really, you know, heartwarming to hear all the stories and, and how it just started, that let's give back to some of these, these cancer patients some of the things that they're missing on a day-to-day -day basis, and, and, and it's one of those things that kind of fell through the cracks in, in their busy lives of being treated and, and getting better, and, and things that they just don't have time for that you found time for, and you, you, told, you made it important uh, to them, and, and it's just great that you've continued this work, that you've partnered with so many groups, it's so interesting. <laughs> Our good friend, Can Errol Toulon, the sheriff, uh, Dr. Yeah, Toulon, the, uh, the sheriff of Suffolk County, so we're a yeah. pleasure to be joined by yeah. him. He knows a good cause when he sees one, <laughs> and uh, so he, he is proud to be here as well. So, uh, Anthony, if you'd like to say a Thank few words Thank you so before. much. In, in 2008, my mother was diagnosed with um, thyroid and throat cancer and you know I just remember as a, I was a kid at the time in my 20s and you don't know where to turn and uh, this organization gives you a place to turn doesn't treat the person like a number treats the person like a person the way they should be treated very well said and I can't thank you enough for what you do for all the people who are struggling and they have nowhere to turn so just from the bottom of my heart thank you guys so much thank thank you. You. <laughs> plan all the events together. Um, biggest one is the, the health fair coming up. Um, collab on fundraising, you know, and really, really putting it all together um, is my favorite part in, in the planning side of things. So my, my grandmother is actually a double uh, breast cancer survivor. Um, and my mother runs a salon, Salon B, out in Blue Point. 
<clears throat> so she told me about it, the, the connection fit, <clears throat> and I, I just had to get involved. Hi, my name is Dr. Errol Toulon Jr. I'm the Sheriff of Suffolk County, and I'm extremely happy to be here at Mondays at Racine, Racine for their ribbon cutting for a number of reasons. One, I'm a two-time cancer survivor, so I know how important it is to have uh, the support system for patients who are going through so much, especially with their families. But more importantly, the public-private partnership, and I'm hoping at some point the Suffolk County Sheriff's Office can be involved in working with Mondays at Racine because it's something that's so near and dear. I know what it's like, I know that feeling, and so that feeling when I walk into this room of those that have gone uh, through chemotherapy and radiation and months, weeks, years uh, resonates with me and I want to do anything I can to support this organization. My name is Lily Duna Roswell and I enjoy supporting Monday at Racines. It is an amazing organization that reaches out and gives hope and love to people who are going through cancer, who need services that they would not be able to find in other places. The nurturing of love, support of hair, skin, anything that they need that you would never thought that would be needed. And it's provided here with loving arms and people who, who give from the bottom of their heart, who know what it means to have cancer, to go have a loved one who suffered from that. And the people at Monday Racing, which I adore so much and I support with all my heart, and the words are just speechless. Because when you see beautiful work and God's hands working on good people coming together to serve, and when we serve God, you serve everything, and radiance and beauty comes from that. I'm Valerie Berger. I'm a board member of Mondays at Racine, and a very grateful one, because for the longest time, I really wanted to be a board member. Because I'm also um, the Assistant Vice President of Cancer Services at Northwell Health. And we started our relationship with Mondays at Racine uh, when the movie came out. And so it was phenomenal for us to support an organization that was right in our backyard and was serving our community in a way that nobody else ever has. And so it's a phenomenal give back from a phenomenal group of sisters, of people, who have such a mission and such a driving force to give so much to the community. So it was my honor as an oncology nurse to be able to be on that side where you could see people in a happy way, in a, in a non-clinical way, and be able to work with them and provide them with moments of peace away from their cancer diagnosis. And so the mission at Mondays at Racine resonates with me on both the medical level, the clinical level, and the personal level, and the sort of spiritual level as well. So there are so many stories and so many moments of beauty that happen and funny that it's a beauty sort of thing but it's you know that that spiritual beauty that happens as well and so I am grateful to be a board member I'm grateful to serve the community and I'm grateful to be able to carry the mission so I'm Dr. David Chu I'm one of the doctors at uh, New York blood and cancer specialists been there about 11 years and um, I first found out about the Racines when I was working with Dr. Ben Schwartz. He's a GYN oncologist and I was giving chemotherapy out of his office and he said, you got to meet these girls. And I said, this is, this is amazing when he told me what the story was. And I ended up going to one of the openings of their uh, movie. Uh, I think it was in Bayshore. And I went, watched the movie with at least 75 other people, looked around, and everybody was crying. Every single person in the, in the movie theater was crying. And I fell in love with them at that moment. And then we started having a lot of uh, meetings and events together. And I think I've gone to every single one that I could have with them. And they come to our events as well. And we've got a great relationship with them now. Um, I actually just spoke with a couple of my partners saying I was going to come to this. They were all very happy. And the biggest thing is that they said the patients really love them. Uh, if you're a cancer patient, one of the last things you think about is what you look like. But it's also one of the things you miss while you're going through treatment. You know, a lot of times they come in and they're sweats and they're feeling sick. They don't want to put their makeup on. 
But they told me a story one time. They did a pop up, and the uh, older woman getting treated for two years with chemotherapy, and they did her makeover. It was a surprise, and she said, "I haven't felt pretty in the two years," and started crying. And <laughs> to think about feeling ugly or not like not feeling attractive for two years is really. Uh, almost like a heart-wrenching thing. Um, I think it's important for them to feel good. If they want to feel good, they also have to look good. Not just free of cancer or anything like that. They have to look good and feel good. And that's what they make them do. Everybody that comes here and leaves here is extremely happy. Um, they all recommend it to their family and uh, any any friends that might be going through this. So obviously it's a it's something that I think is going to be uh, perpetually needed, and there's a there's a dearth of of, uh, of services uh, for these patients. Oftentimes, they don't know about it, and they often do things. They look on the internet and look on YouTube and internet uh, uh, Google, and uh, they don't. It's not even close to if you have somebody that specializes in this field and directs you and how to uh, uh, go through all this, the wellness stuff, the, the, not just hair and makeup, but the wellness, the Reiki, the, the massage, the, uh, all the services they do. So I think it's an integral part of cancer treatment. And not the doctors, not the nurses. But it's a it's a team. Um, so <laughs> proud to know these these ladies and the staff is amazing. And my name's Patty Oswald. Um, I am a licensed oncology massage therapist. I do clinical lymphatic therapy. Um, I'm also part of the infusion support team, and we go into infusion areas to comfort the patients that are in there for hours. I also um, do site management for Mondays at Racine when we go into a location to do a big event and bring our event to people to kind of help them through their journey. And we seem to be able to relieve whatever discomfort that they can have. I try my very, very best to accommodate them all. Um, I like to be able to give them something they can take home and do for themselves at home. It's one thing if I can do it for them, but then when they leave, if they're still in discomfort, they need to be able to learn how to do that for themselves. So I try and accommodate that. I've been doing this with them since the very beginning, and um, I had family members. Everybody has somebody that's been touched by this, and so I try and just make them leave with a smile, and if I can do that, I'm happy.